uh, rousing introduction. Thank you, Doug Moore, for taking so much time to really get the crowd going for me. Thank you for all the previous speakers who warmed the crowd up today. My name is Rob Lamb, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I want to thank you for making such a commotion for me this morning. It really is heartwarming to have you come in for a talk about minimalism. Minimalism is kind of a new lifestyle form that's going around. A lot of people are minimalists. But what is minimalism? Minimalism is the idea of doing more with less, or not having so much. We live in a very consumer-centric society. One of the things that most people are passionate about in our society was created by a minimalist. In fact, this minimalist in his home, very nice home and in his room, he had a bed, a chair, a table, and a Tiffany lamp. That's all he had in there. Who was this man? What did he create? The iPhone. Steve Jobs was a minimalist. If you look at an iPhone in general, it's got one button, mainly. If you look at the iPhone 10, this is an older version, the iPhone 10 doesn't even have a button for the home screen, to bring the home screen up. Very minimal design. All the buttons have gone away on the iPhone 10. Some of these charging ports are in different spots, but it's, very, it's done with a very minimalist philosophy. Also, think about what this iPhone does. This iPhone does get rid of paper books. Because you can get them on your phone. There's an app called Libby. Or for those of you that are more consumer savvy, you probably buy your books on Amazon and read them on your, on your iPhone. What else does this iPhone minimize? This iPhone minimizes phone books and directories and Rolodexes. They're all gone. What else does this minimize? It minimizes a map. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need a paper map anymore. Who else? Who has traveled with a paper map in the last decade? <laughs> One person, two people, two people out of all of you. Either you, none of you are leaving the house, or, <laughs> or you're using a phone to get your directions. All right? So why did he do this? Why did he do this? Because he did, decided that there was too much junk in the world. Now, there is a couple of books I've been reading and I've been learning about minimalism because in my own life, I've decided that I need to get rid of some stuff. Some of the stuff that I need to get rid of or some of the stuff many of you probably need to get rid of. If you probably go home and look in your garage, if you can even get into it, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff that you need to get rid of. So let's start with some of the basics. In her book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, Japanese author Marie Kondo talks about how to get rid of your stuff. She's like the superstar of organization and minimalism. She talks about really getting to know your things, talking to them. The first place that she wants to go to is for your closet. She wants to talk about cleaning out your closet. So you go in there and you look at your clothes and you touch them. You pull them all out, put them on the bed, and you touch them. If it doesn't spark joy, throw it in this pile. If it sparks joy, put it over here. And sort through all your clothes that way. And then, you look at this pile, and you look at that pile, and you keep this pile. That pile you donate or find another place for it to go. Then she talks about cleaning up your books. Taking your books. Why do you need books anymore? You have this. You have a library. Libraries do something that's really, really neat. You know what they do? They use taxpayer dollars to store books. <gasps> Weird. <laughs> Weird. How many of you have a very full pantry? Why do you have a very full pantry? Is the end of the world near? Do you live 75 <laughs> miles away? Do you live 75 miles away from the nearest grocery store? Store? 
where they store food and it's always fresh? No. See, minimalize your things. In his book, Goodbye Things, Fumio Sasaki says, the one of the several things that he learned when he got rid of all of his stuff by following Marie Kondo's way, is see, he got tired of always having to manage his things. Think about that. Your things need to be managed, right? You have to move things when you dust. You have to move things when you're trying to declutter. You have to organize your necklaces. You have to organize for whatever that you wear. And that takes time. And then what could that time be used for? Where could it go? Where does it go? It's the very one thing you cannot get back. Time. You can always make money, but you can't always get time. So are you going to spend your life worrying about your things? Or are you going to put that time into experiences? Put that time into taking a road trip with your family because you don't have to worry about your things anymore. You don't have to worry about who's going to dust the house or clean the house because you're not going to have to move a lot of clutter because you've gotten rid of a lot of clutter. And it's not just getting rid of things, folks. Please don't misunderstand me. It's about just getting rid of the clutter that's in our life. Steve Jobs, the guy who did Facebook, what's his name? Oh, Mark Zuckerberg. Have you ever looked at them when they were doing professional speeches or when they walk in their normal everyday life? Have you ever seen them? There was a famous old TV show called Matlock. And this guy followed the same procedure. What do they do? They have a work uniform. Every day they go to work, they wear the same thing. It's not the same thing that they wore yesterday, but it's the thing that they don't have to make a decision about anymore. Steve Jobs always wore a black turtleneck and jeans. Mark Zuckerberg wears a gray t-shirt and jeans. Matt Locke wore a gray suit. When you opened his closet, they saw nothing but gray suits. That's all they wore. But think about the decision time that he doesn't have to take to figure out what is he going to wear to work. And it doesn't have to be something tacky. None of these guys are tacky. None of these people are tacky. I recently saw an episode on CBS This Morning of this lady who decided to create her own work uniform. This gray blouse, or gray blazer, gray slacks, and a white shirt, and a red belt. She said, people always comment on how well she wears a red belt, and she'd never seen it before. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to challenge you to take the first step. Think that you might have too, too much stuff. And then the second step, try cleaning out your closet. Thank you very much. If you would take a few moments and write your comments on the form. job and something he didn't really have time to prepare for. He had minimal preparation time, which suited him perfectly.